like to call to order the Local Agency Formation Commission meeting County of Kern, State of California, for meeting January 23rd, 2019. Roll call, please. Commissioner Fowler? Present. Commissioner Scribner? Commissioner Sanders? Here. Commissioner Rivera? Here. Commissioner Mello? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner McGuire? Commissioner Couch? Commissioner Morris? Here. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to ask Commissioner Rivera if he would lead us in the flag. Thank you. Approval of the minutes for my December 5th, 2018 minute meeting. I need, are there any corrections? Okay, I need a, we need to vote on this. Move to approve. Okay, we have a motion by Barb. Commissioner Fowler, a second by Commissioner Morris, cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Seeing none, we'll go to number item five, public project review. A, 1731 City of Bakersfield, annexation number 658, TAF number two. Mr. Knox. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, item seven, 1731, City of Bakersfield, annexation number 658, TAF number two. Uh, on September 7, 2018, the City of Bakersfield submitted this annexation request. This pro pro proposal is to annex appro approximately 14.72 acres of uninhabited territory into the City of Bakersfield. The proposed area is located south of Taft Highway which is State Route 119, east of Hughes Lane. This area is within the city's sphere of influence and has been planned for in the city's general plan. The area is zoned M2PD, which is General Manufacturing Pre uh, Precise Development, and A1MH, which is Limited Agriculture and One Acre Minimum Mobile Home Combining. There will be no tax increase with this uh, proposal. It is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plans. There is no ag land uh, conversion as there are no commercial crops currently be grown, being grown on the property. It conforms the assessor's parcel. There is no functional oral overlap. The city of Bakersfield has a current municipal service review. Uh, how much additional water will be used is unknown at this time. The buyer will be analyzed when the parcel is developed. This application does not increase or decrease housing. Uh, the applicant has signed an indemnification agreement. <coughs> Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. No comments were provided. This annex annexation has two issues that may bring it, bringing this item to the commission a bit of a challenge. First, how do we determine a duck? and two, the definition of substantially, substantially surrounded. I will talk about ducks for a minute and turn it over to Mr. Schroeder to discuss substantially surrounded issues. A disadvantaged unincorporated community or a duck has several definitions, including one we use when it is unincorporated community with 12 or more voters with a median household income of 80% of the California average. This annexation falls within a census tract that includes both the city of, 
both the unincorporated area and areas developed within the city of Bakersfield. This makes it very difficult to, to determine if the unincorporated area, area next to this annexation is, in, is, in, is indeed a duck. All data available to us indicate that this area, area is not a duck, therefore we must determine that it is not a duck, if that makes sense. We have no other data that, that gets us there. We are working with Kern Cog, who works with uh, the Census Bureau on creating census, uh, census tracts, the tracts of how they break up the areas uh, for doing the census. Uh, we will be working with those, but those, that information won't go into effect until after the 2020 census is in place. So that leaves us with an interesting uh, issue. But for now, the data shows it's not a duck, so we're treating it as if it's not a duck. When I first looked at the map for this potential annexation of this property, my first response was that it creates an island, or at least an area that's substantially surrounded, as you can see on the maps. Uh, we met with the city staff, and they concurred that the annexation substantially surrounds this unincorporated island. If completely surrounded, the city of Bakersfield would likely have to take in the entire area or potentially create a plan for future annexations in the area. Mr. Schroeder clarified how the definition of substantially surrounded is applied in the state law that allows this annexation to go through. Mr. Schroeder, uh, can you do us the honor of explaining what the issue issues were in this area and how the state code addresses this issue? Uh, there are two or three code sections that deal with substantially surrounded. Uh, the one that applies here is Government Code Section 56375A5. In that case, it's not the pumpkin center uh, part of the map that you're concerned about that's substantially surrounded. It is, in fact, substantially surrounded by the city. But the code section that I've cited deals with the area to be annexed. If that is substantially surrounded by the city, then you have the option of requiring the city to also annex the Pumpkin Center area, which is substantially surrounded. The case law on what substantially surrounded means uh, is not, not precise enough for, for us to know whether we have substan a substantially surrounded uh, annexed area here. The most I can find is that the courts ha have decided that 68% of an area that is surrounded by a city constitutes substantial uh, surrounding. This is probably 50%. Uh, but I don't find any cases that say 50% is not substantially surrounded or 50% is substantially surrounded. So you do, you do have an issue here that, that, that allows you some discretion if you want to proceed with it. Um, you could take the position that the annexed area is more than 50% surrounded by the city, and you could then impose the obligation on the city to also annex the Pumpkin Center area. In my opinion, it is the annexed area is not substantially surrounded by the city, and I would not recommend that you exercise your discretion in that manner. Thank you, Mr. Schroeder. Uh, we have met with the city of Bakersfield and they have concluded that it would be too expensive to annex the whole, whole Pumpkin Center area in one shot. Uh, they would rather do it as development happens in the area, just like we've been doing in the past. Uh, the process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Local Government Reor Reorganization Act of 2000 has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. A mitigated negative declaration has been filed by the city of Bakersfield. This proposal has 100% landowner consent. Applicants have requested notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. If approved, the proposal is subject to condition recommended by the executive officer. Is the recommendation is to consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1731 with conditions set by the executive <laughs> officer. Thank you. Is there any members of the public who would like to speak to this? 
Please state your name and address. Sure, my name is Steve Esselman. Um, my uh, address is uh, uh, the planning division at uh, 1715 Chester Avenue, second floor. I am the principal planner in charge of annexations on behalf of the city, and I'm just here to answer any questions if you might have any. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Come on up. Uh, good evening. My name is Matt Vovella. I'm the engineer on the uh, the project, and uh, I'm not sure if it's, um, it carries any weight or not, but we've gone through the G general plan amendment zone change process w within the city of Bakersfield uh, that has all been approved pending this annexation. Uh, the owners of the property uh, graciously in the past allowed uh, an easement for uh, a city sewer main to run within that property along the east side, and their intent has always been to annex uh, within the city. We've also processed a parcel map uh, within the city and, and uh, done improvement plans for Taft Highway uh, to widen that to uh, in accordance with uh, city standards and Caltrans standards. I'm also can answer any questions that that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Any more? Okay, commissioners. Well, I'll move approval of the annexation. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Fowler, a second by Commissioner Couch. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. Go to item B, 1733, City of Bakersfield, annexation number 676, which is Verdugo number three, and north of the River Sanitary District number one, and CSA number 71, detachment in. Mr. Knox. Yes. On July 30th, 2018, the City of Bakersfield submitted annexation number 676. As you mentioned, North River Sanitation District also needs to annex and is to be detached from CSA 71. Uh, this is detachment N. This proposal is to annex approximately 8.97 acres owned by the Norris School District into the city of Bakersfield and North River Sanitation District number one. The proposed area is located north of Snow Road and on the east side of Verdugo Lane. Combined with a parcel to the north owned by the school district that is already in the city, this property will be a future elementary school site. The area is also within CSA 71, which provides sewer service. Since the city of Bakersfield will be pro providing these services to this area, the county wishes to, to detach the area from the CSA. This area is, is within the city's sphere of influence, has been planned for in the ger city's general plan. The area is zoned A, agricultural in the county, has been pre-zoned E, estate, by the city of Bakersfield. General plan designation for county is R1A, that's resource intensive agriculture, agriculture, and the city's general plan is SR, suburban residential. There is no tax increase with this annexation. It is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plans. Uh, there is no commercial crop currently being grown on the property. There is no disadvantage unincorporated community. Uh, conforms with assessor's parcels. Uh, the functional overlap will be resolved if you desire to um, vote to annex this. Uh, this is within the city's sphere and the city has a, a current municipal service review. Uh, we do not know how much water this will re require at this time. That will be uh, analyzed when the parcel is developed. It does not increase housing or decrease housing. It's commission is consistent with commission policies and the applicant has signed an identification agreement. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. No comments were provided. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. This proposal has 100% landowner consent and the applicant has requested that the notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived as allowed by government code section 56663. It is my recommendation to consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant 
waive notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1733 with conditions set by the executive officer. Thank you. Is there anyone in the public who'd like to speak to this? Again, I'm Steve Elselman, principal planner with the city, uh, 1715 Chester Avenue, second floor. Uh, just wanted to say I'm again available if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the commissioners? Okay, we will need a vote on this. I move Most approval. Sorry. You want to move approval? Oh, go ahead. Is it on? There we go. We just need a second. Still I need ready. a second. Oh. Second. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner Fowler. Cast your vote. Sanders, actually. Oh, thank you. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, item C, 1742, inactive district list resolutions. State controller SB 448, Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District and 18 county service areas. Mr. Knox. Yes, four year consideration is, is the dissolution of the Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District and 18 county service areas. The CSAs, the county service areas, or CSAs, were acknowledged by the State Controller's Office and determined by Colonel Lafco to be inactive and eligible for the streamlined dis dissolution process as outlined in SB 448. Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District was not on the State Controller's list of inactive districts, but was determined by this commission to meet the definition and, and the intent of the law. CEQA has been met with a notice of exemption filed by this commission. It is the recommendation is to consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, approve the dissolution of the Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District and the 18 county service areas included in this report. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak to this item? Commissioners, we're going to need a motion and a second. Motion on the recommendation. Second, Fowler. We have a motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner Fowler. Cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. Commission items. Okay. General business A, approval of claims list number 1809. I'll move approval. Second, Fowler. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Rivera, second by Commissioner Fowler. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Item B, confirmation of chair and appointment of vice chair. And again, we're going to have to have a vote on this, but I'm trying to there. You received in your packet a, a memo on how since 2011, how they were chosen, which which categories, and it looks to me like the city would be up next. Any comments? For vice chair. For vice chair. Special District Commissioner McKibben will be your chair. He's the current vice chair. So for the, the new chair is sitting to my left, Commissioner McKibben will take over next month. 
and we need to elect a vice chair. My opinion, and I'm only one of the few of us, I feel it should be a city representative. That's as far as I'm going. I'm not going to appoint either, unless I have to. Is, is that something Ms. Morris is interested in? Um, it's a baptism by fire. I'd go ahead and nominate uh, Liz Morris. <laughs> and I second that nomination. <laughs> okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Rivera, a second by Commissioner Sanders to have our Commissioner Morris from the city of Delano as vice chair. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay. Petition submittal is C, proposed formation of Weldon Regional Water District. This is an informational item from Mr. Knox. Yes. The, regional, the Weldon Regional Water District is being formed to provide water sources, resources, and facilities to ensure clean, clean, adequate, and affordable water supply to water user, users within the Weldon Regional Water District's boundaries. Encouraged and funded by the State Water Board, formation of the district is at the request of five small water systems and, and signed a petition of the landowners. The water system includes the Long Canyon Water Company, Rainbird Valley Mutual Water Company, Tradewinds Water Association, Bella Vista Mutual Water Company, and the Lake Isabella KOA. Four out of these five systems have contaminated water supplies exceeding the safe drinking water levels for nitrates and or uranium. Existing system problems also include old and deteriorating water lines, storage tanks and wells, and an, an inadequate backup water supply for emergency use and fire protection. Individually, these small systems lack the water user base needed to make improvements and the geographic range to obtain this distribution uh, to obtain and distribute clean water. We have received the landowner's signatures petition and are, are in the process of verifying the signatures using the criteria outlined in section 56708 of the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Reorganization Act. Uh, so we are now in the, we've been working at this for three years now, and we're getting to the point where it's now coming real. Um, pet petitions have been signed, they have been turned into us. We verify them. They also get, because this is a, a property owner district, it'll be verified by the assessor's office, and eventually we'll get the application and bring it back to you to create a brand new district. Uh, we haven't done that in a while, I don't believe especially one this, this complicated and large. So um, that's where we are on, on uh, Weldon at this point. Okay, thank you. Now for item D, executive officer miscellaneous items. Yes. Mr. Knox. Uh, today you, uh, dissolve the Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District. At the last meeting, you directed us to include a portion of that ter territory into the Northwest Current Resource Conservation District. We'll be putting out notice notices shortly and plan to have this on the next agenda. So we haven't forgotten about that part of what you approved last time. It, because of our noticing requirements, we couldn't get it on this agenda fast enough. Uh, we, start, we are still in line to get uh, reimburse back about $15,000 from Department of Conservation if we get it done quickly enough. And I will make sure that we get it done quickly enough. Um, our audit is still not complete. The auditor asked for additional information when we returned after the Christmas break. I hope to have a draft of the audit from them soon. Just want to make sure you're aware that that's still coming. Uh, also, with the election of um, Commissioner McKibben and Commissioner Morris. Um, 
there, we have a policy here, a local policy on check signing that requires two signatures. Um, sometimes that's difficult to get a second signature. Usually Commissioner and Chairman Mello has been around and been great of coming by the office and signing them, but both of you may not be available all the time for us to do that. Uh, so we may want to need to consider a different policy. Uh, if I had a suggestion, it would probably be uh, past current chair, vice chair, and maybe past chairs, which includes most of you. <laughs> so that gives, would give me some options of who could, who could sign uh, on the account. So keep that in mind, and uh, I'll bring that back to you later. If you have any suggestions, I'm happy to, happy to hear them. Not hearing a suggestion. Um, we will begin the process shortly to fill the public member uh, commission seat. The term for the seat ends in May. If you know of anyone who is interested in serving on LAFCO as a public member, please send them my way. Um, tonight, this room was double booked. At 6.30, the um, rec and, uh, Park and Rec Board will be holding their meeting in these chambers. Uh, we'll be going in closed session sh shortly. If closed session is short, we can come back out and report out what has been accomplished. If not, we might need to close the meeting and announce the results of the next meeting. I don't foresee that we're gonna have any problem getting out of here in the next hour. So, um, but just be aware of that. If we're starting to run long, we may need to come out and close the meeting. And that's the end of my miscellaneous comments. Okay, then I'll, I'll go ahead and close the meeting. We'll go to executive, then we can come out and report, or do I not close? Can I ask a, qu can I ask a question about that before you do that? Since Super Rec, does it create a problem if we, I know it's your re review and it's your, uh, our chance to discuss your performance and all that, but since Supervisor Scribner is not here, does it create any hardship if we defer this for a month until he returns for you? If you want to make, uh, if there is, no. I, I don't want to, I don't want to suggest no. that if there's something that you really need to talk to us about or in your review, I don't want to, I don't no. want to just put, I know we put it off from last month. Uh, we had some discussion about it, but we didn't have our council available, so we didn't want to, we didn't want to get into it very far. I was thinking of making a joke about making pay ret retroactive, but I'm just going to leave that yeah, alone. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> does, it, does it create any issues? It does you? not. I, I'm going to suggest that because if, when we get in there, I'm going to suggest it anyway. So, but you're the chair. If it's going to be suggested in there, why waste our time sending all these chairs in there? And I don't mean chairs and vice chairs, I mean <laughs> chairs. Let's go ahead and, yes, sir. Do you have a comment, Tom? Uh, no, that, that's what I was gonna suggest. Let's don't just go in, into closed session and cancel it. Just right. do it out here. Let's just do it and we'll, send, we'll move our closed session from December to January to February. I believe you need a motion and second to continue that. Okay. I'll move that. Second. Sanders. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Couch, a sec uh, yeah, a second by Commissioner Sanders to move our closed session to next meeting. Cast your vote. Motion approved all ayes. And now I will close this meeting for this month. And next month, Commissioner McKibben will be our chair. <laughs>